All the stories I could tell you, so many of them true. Hello and welcome to another episode of Blastercated Painting. Today we're going to be painting Hondo Anaka from Star Wars Shatterpoint by Atomic Mass Games. Hondo is an awesome character from his introduction in the Clone Wars to Star Wars Rebels and then I think he's in charge of the Millennium Falcon at the Disney Park? I don't know. Something weird. Apparently he's, he's really old. He ages differently than humans. Either way, this is a super cool miniature that captures the essence of that character really well. So let's paint him. So something a little different, I'm going to give the miniature a spray of like a dark olive green. Uh, normally I start from white, but I'm changing it up. And we're going to take some burnt red from Pro Acryl, and we're going to put this all over the red parts of his coat. So obviously I'm emulating the box art for this one, but anyway, it's going all over. I've been playing around with the Pro Acryl paints and uh, I was using them over white, which uh, didn't, it wasn't working very well. They were still splotchy, but over a darker color, they just go on in one coat, pretty much. They're really good. So I'm gonna play around with them some more, but right now I'm thinking I definitely want more of these. Then we're gonna take some vampiric flesh here and this is gonna go all over his shirt and the wrappings on his arms and uh, the AK Interactive paints are really good too. They mostly do everything in one coat. Um, going over a dark primer, which I just don't do often, uh, it's been really good. I'm going to do it a lot more often going forward because this worked out great. Now we're going to take some yellow ochre from Pro Acryl. This color is awesome. I, I don't know everything I'm going to use it for, but I really like it and it's going on his pants. Now we're taking some dark gray blue and this is going all over his boots. I probably could have just left his boots the olive color, but nah, eh, whatever. Now we're taking some gray here and this is gonna go all over his uh, turtle shell hat, tortoise hat. I don't know what it is. It looks like a tortoise hat. I'm not really sure what world in the Star Wars universe. You're like, give me that Give me that tortoise shell hat, please. Or did he eat the tortoise? Kill it? And then wear it as a hat? Either way. It's a weird garment choice. Next, we're taking some dark flesh stone here, and this is going to go all over his uh, face and his hands. So when you're painting his face, you kind of want to stay away from the goggles that he has on. So it's mostly just the lower part of his face, and then, yeah, his hands. I didn't film a bottle here, so it's sky blue is what we're going to next. And this is going all over the Kowakian lizard monkey he has, the, uh, you know, the blue salacious crumb guy. Anyway, what's going on there? Now we're taking some emerald alchemy, and this is going all over the plates he has at the front of his jacket, and also his uh, shoulder pads that he has up there. His, uh, I don't know, it's coat armor. It's a little bit of coat armor. And we're going to take some mid-brown, we're going to water this down, and this is just going to go on his pants and on his shirt and the wrappings on his arms. So we just want to give a little bit of shade to them. Next, we're going to take some dark flesh tone and some tan flesh. So we're going to start adding in a little bit of that tan flesh first. We're not putting a wash on the skin at all. And we're going to just start layering up his skin by adding in little bits of tan flesh. Uh, bit by bit um, so you can see the first layer going on we're just hitting those raised edges so we're basically treating the dark flesh tone as though it was washed and we're just hitting those raised spots and you can see we've added in a little bit more uh, tan flesh here and we're just building up all of our colors so by adding in a little bit more here bringing up every little color we can to get that particular face color that he has now I, in the comic books he looks uh, sorry comic books in the show he looks a little bit more gray but not always sometimes he's got a little bit more of a fleshy color uh, it doesn't matter we're just gonna make him look uh, 
we're just gonna make it look good and now this will be the brightest highlight that we do and it's just basically little tiny spots where we want to leave most of our original color there and we're just like almost dotting in little tiny details here now we're gonna take some deep red and this is gonna be something a little different I'm gonna do the highest colors that I want on the coat first so instead of doing a mid-tone and building it up I'm gonna do the highest parts um, so I'm gonna go through with that deep red and put it all over the burnt red just on the highest parts that I want leaving the burnt red in the recesses now that I know where I have my highlights I'm gonna take some burnt red add it to my deep red and then I'm just gonna go in and fill in the spots where I left the burnt red and now I've painted the coat the way I want so it's it's red and we've still got that mid-tone in there, but it doesn't go too much lower. So it doesn't overpower any of the red. And we're hopping back to that vampiric flesh that we used. And we're going to do our first highlight up on his shirt and the wrappings around his arms. So basically we're using that thin wash we used as a guide. We're not going to paint over that area. We're just going on the highest bits here. And even on the wrapping, sometimes it's a little hard to differentiate where they are. So, you know if you put in some streaks and stuff like that just like some little lines here and there you can still get the same idea of what you're trying to convey now we're adding in a touch of ivory to that vampiric flesh and we're just going to do the last little highlight up on here so again we're still leaving some of that vampiric flesh we have our mid uh brown in the recesses and this is starting to look really nice and we're hopping back to our yellow ochre and we're going to do the same thing we've just done on everything else but we're doing it on the pants obviously and we're just getting those raised areas leaving that mid brown alone just like we did on the shirt and we're just bringing up that yellow ochre so now we're taking our ivory that we just put into our vampiric flesh and we're putting a little bit into this now and we're just bringing up the last little layer we're going to do on those pants so this is just a little touch same thing we've been doing go through leave some of the original yellow ochre we already layered with and this is just our little highlight up of all the color we're hopping back to gray here and we're just going to do one little layer up on his boots we don't have to go too much into this so it's kind of like a dull black leather we don't want them to be too shiny so just one layer up I also really like the episode in Rebels where he is just willing to sacrifice uh, as Morrigan. Just leave him on that ship that's being sucked into like a dying star. No problem. No big deal. Then we're taking some stone wall gray. Now we're going to use this on everything that we used on the tortoise shell and also his uh, braids that he has on the back. So um, we're just going through again, leaving our recesses, just layering up bringing all the color back into it and we're gonna add in a little touch of ivory to that stonewall gray and do another little highlight up on all that now we're taking some yellow and I'm just gonna use this on the inside of the ears of the lizard monkey and the palm of his hands and there's a couple spots on his body and we're going to take some ivory here and we're going to put this on the lizard monkey's face. Once that's all dried, we're going to take some blue tone here and we're just going to put it over everything we just painted. So all the blue, the yellow and the white on his face. We're going to take some copper brown and some speed paint medium. We're going to thin this down quite a bit. And we're just going to kind of turn it into a dirty wash that's going to go on those armor bits just to sort of age them down a little bit so they're not so shiny. And we're going to take that yellow again and we're going to just brighten up all those yellow spots. So that's under the ears. Um, the tuft on his head, some of those spots of the body and his hands. We're also going to use it eventually to dot in his eyes. We're taking our yellow as well, and we're doing all the trim on Hondo's coat. So he's got some trim around his waist and also the trim up on the edge of the collars. And we're going to take some ivory again, and we're just going to go in and brighten up that face that we did on the lizard monkey. So just little tiny highlights here we want to leave his mouth and 
And again, sky blue, because I forgot to film the bottle at my desk and I'm not setting everything back up to do it. There we go. So we're just bringing up all that blue color that we did. So everything's been washed down. Now we're just highlighting up, leaving the recesses like we've been doing the whole way through. And uh, he's really starting to look pretty good actually. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of livery green to that sky blue and I'm gonna do a final highlight up on that uh, blue flesh. I don't know if it's fur, they're lizard monkeys. So it's flesh. Anyway, we're doing that. This is where we take our yellow and this is where we dot in his eyes. These are really small, so if you don't wanna do it, just skip it. But if you can, it adds a little something. Now we're taking some magic blue here and this is just gonna go on his lens of his goggles. Then we're gonna take some gun metal. We are gonna use this just on the uh, little braids that he has, like the little, uh, I don't know what they are, braid knots. It's also gonna be a dry brush on his gun. Now we're taking some Grave Lord Gray. We're gonna wash the gun, it's gonna dry. We're gonna do the base and this guy is done. And here he is all finished up. I'm really, really happy with how he turned out. Um, all the colors on him really stand out. The skin looks really good. I'm very happy. Uh, he's so much fun. I personally think that this miniature encapsulates the character really well. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I remember in the Clone Wars when Hondo first showed up um, in the episode, I think it's the episode where Dooku gets captured and then Anakin and Obi-Wan get captured. I don't know, he was seemed like a one-off character. He was fun. I really liked him. I'm glad that he kept appearing because he became really one of the better uh, prequel characters and then comes back in Rebels and in Rebels I think he's great because he's, it's just he's alone and he's amped up the lying and the cheating as much as possible. I mean, he's not a role model, that's for sure. Like, he's just such a fun character that he really doesn't have an arc. I mean, he gets a little bit better by the end of Rebels, but he's really just a dirty old scoundrel. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff, and you guys have a great day. I remember in the Clone Wars when Hondo's first... When Hondo's... When Hondo's... I probably could have just left his blue boots deep. Blech. Hondo is an awesome character from his introduction in the Clone Wars to, uh, what's that other one called?